to trying to, uh, you know, to almost put yourselves in a bubble to kind of get through it and be COVID free. Now that you look at it, uh, being one of the few Big Ten teams not to have lost a game uh, due to um, um, how challenging has it been to, to not be a normal college student? Um, it's definitely been challenging. Uh, this isn't really how I anticipated my last year of college basketball going. Um, you guys know just as well as anybody how crazy the rack can get. Um, and you know, my teammates, we tend to feed off of that. So going through every home game this year and um, basically just not having that has been really difficult. On top of that, not being able to see everybody. Um you know, not being able to go home sometimes. I'm, I'm a local kid, so, you know, I got a really good relationship with my parents. Ever since I've been here at Rutgers, I like to go home, like, at least once or twice a week just to see my mom and dad. I haven't really been able to do that much either. But I think in the grand scheme of things, it just shows how committed and dedicated our team is to making this one of the most historic seasons in Rutgers basketball history, especially the guys who are returning because um, mm -hmm. we're coming up on like the year anniversary of uh, when we were in Indiana and they canceled everything on us as we were warming up. So, I mean, it just goes to show how badly our guys want it. And Coach Pico preaches it all the time. He says, you know, the team that navigates COVID the best is probably going to have the best chance of winning a national championship. And we haven't had any games canceled. And I think everybody has been smart about it on and off the court. So hopefully we can keep it going, you know, down the home stretch. You know, we only got a few – Few more weeks left, so. Uh, Nick, speaking about last year, how much did the stretch run of last season? How, how does that help with the position you're in now, and uh, how how much of a challenge is it for the team to kind of remain carefree on the court with with all that's going on off the court? Um. Well, I mean, we all get tested every day. So when you're here, when we're in practice, when we're in games, when we're traveling together, there really isn't a, a fear of any of us get, getting sick just because we know we've all been tested. I think the, the caution tends to kick in um, outside of, you know, the rack or the APC. That's when everybody kind of, you know, gets a little bit antsy just because um, – you know, you don't know where these other people have been. But, you know, I, like I said before, I think I think the guys have done a really good job. I think we've done a good job just keeping our priorities in order. You know, a, a, a night out with a young lady is really worth, you know, risking the NCAA tournament. And, you know, I think everybody looked themselves in the mirror and got their priorities straight. And uh, like I said, we've been smart about it, and I think we're going to continue to be smart about it. We'll go to uh, Steve Felitti and then Ricky Snyder. Hey, Nick, you mentioned Indianapolis last year. I'm, I'm wondering what stands out in your mind. What, what memories do you have of that experience of getting pulled off the court and, and you know, a year later looking back on it now? Um. I remember we got there. Uh, we had just beat Purdue in our final regular season game. And everybody in the program, every single one of our fans knew that if we won that game on the road, because we weren't exactly the best road team last year, but we knew going into that game, if we won that game, there was no way that they could keep us out of March Madness with 20 wins and the best conference in America. So when we got that done, it was kind of like a sense of relief. But at the same time, in the back of our minds, we were thinking, well, we can win this tournament, too. And, uh, you know, everything that we've done on top of that is just gravy. Um, I remember we got there and we had a really good practice at, I guess, like one of the local gyms in the area of Indianapolis. And we were ready. We were ready to play Michigan. They had already beaten us twice. Uh, they beat us at the Garden which was basically a home game for us. And then they turned around and beat us again at the rack and messed up our, our undefeated home winning streak that year. So we were ready. We were ready. We know how hard it is. It's hard to beat a team twice, let alone beat them three times. So we were ready to go. And I remember I was in a hotel room with, uh, with Ron. He was my roommate for this trip. And we were watching TV and we saw 
the uh, the Mavericks game. I forgot who they were playing, but uh, I think they had like a commercial break or it was halftime, and that's when they started saying the uh, that the Thunder and the Utah Jazz game was being canceled because Gobert had uh, tested positive for the coronavirus. And I looked at Ron and like we kind of looked at each other like, bro, we're we're not playing tomorrow. Like there's there's no possible way that we're gonna go ahead and go through with this. And literally ten minutes after that is when the ticker at the bottom of the screen on ESPN said the NBA has literally postponed their season. And I literally like I could hear because we normally all stay on the same floor. We're in a hotel. Like I could hear like my teammates like, down the hall screaming like you know like what the hell is going on. Um, it was kind of frightening, really. Like we didn't know about the virus. We didn't know what was going to happen. I knew in the back of my mind that there wasn't going to be a game played tomorrow. I actually told Ron, I was like, Ron, we're going to go because the NCAA had a meeting the next day. I think it was at nine o'clock in the morning and our game started at 12. So we knew that the meeting was probably going to conclude like right before our game started. So I told Ron and I told a few other my teammates, like, you guys know we're going to get there. We're going to go about, we're going to go about the morning as if we would any other game. We're going to warm up and watch them come on the court and take us off and tell us that this is canceled. We're not playing today. And um, a few of my teammates got mad at me because they thought I was being negative. And, you know, once I saw that the NBA had canceled their season, I was like, there's no way that we're going to go through with March Madness, especially with a virus out here that no one knows about with, you know, putting people's lives in danger. And sure enough, we woke up the next morning. We got, uh, we had breakfast in the hotel, went over to the arena. Um, we showed up, got dressed in the locker room, went out there on the court. And I remember there was like maybe 12 minutes left on the clock. And like everybody kind of knew that like something was like something was going to happen, but nobody really wanted to admit it. And then I remember our, um, our director of ops, Ben Asher, he came out on the court and like, like you could just tell that he had like some somber news to share with us. And he just kind of like motioned for us to come back to the locker room. And like guys were like really, really upset on both teams. I remember Michigan, some of their guys were really upset too. We got back in the locker room. We just kind of sat there for about 10 minutes. Um, Pat Hobbs was on the phone with the commissioner of the league. He came in and talked to coach Pico in the, like the separate part of the locker room where the, uh, where the coaches tend to meet at. And um, they just came out and they told us it looked like somebody had just died. Like it was so sad. Um, and it was just kind of like, everybody just kind of put their head down. Cause like we knew that there wasn't like, this was going to be it. We had done so much and we were ready to keep going, but we just kind of knew that that was going to be it. And um, we flew home, and by the time we landed in Newark, um, the tournament had been canceled. And not just the tournament, but, like, school. Like, Rutgers made an announcement that, like, just told everybody to go home. It was one of the most bizarre things ever. It's really sad to look back at, which makes this, which makes this season, you know, even more important, you know, especially for the people who were there last year, having that taken away from us. So I think it means a lot for us to take care of business this year and get back to that point. Nick, just just as a follow up, were you guys scared out there on the court? I, mean, I just remember you slathering the the you know the hand sanitizer. There's so much unknown about what was going on. I mean, was there legitimate fear when we were in Indiana last year or this year? Indiana, Indiana last year, correct? Oh, it was it was ridiculous. Like we had like our managers had um, like uh, things of hand sanitizer like on them at all times. Um, hand sanitizer in each hotel room. People were stealing hand sanitizer. Like, it was ridiculous because we weren't just the only people in that hotel that we were staying at. So, um, yeah, it was bad. It, it really wasn't the ideal situation. And then for us to fly home, I remember us getting on the plane and them having to disinfect everything. They gave us um, baby wipes to wipe down the seats. You know, it was it was scary, man, because nobody really knew about it. So, yeah, it definitely wasn't uh, – peaches and cream on the way back and the experience there. It was definitely uh, kind of frightening. Thank you. Appreciate you. Nick, looking back at your freshman year at Wesleyan, did you ever envision your whole college career going like this? No. No. Never would I have, like, pictured <clears throat> excuse me, my last year of college basketball being played out like this. Like, I'm grateful for the fact that I get to be here 
because sitting home for three months, I'm pretty sure all you gentlemen know that it was making me lose my mind. I'm pretty sure you all can relate, but like, you know, just the fact that, you know, there's so many more precautions and, you know, there not being any fans, you know, my parents not being able to come to the game. Um, it, like I, I could have never predicted this in any way, shape or form, but at the same time, I'm just grateful to be here. I'm grateful that I get to have a last season. I'm grateful I get to have a senior night. It could be a whole lot worse. So, Snake, appreciate the time.